Glory to Jesus Christ. We have to start calling things as they are and calling people as they are. The early Christians like St. Polycarp uh, didn't beat around the bush. They called things as they were. You know, with regard to the heretic Marcion, uh, Polycarp called him the firstborn of Satan. Uh, he called those who were immoral, living and doing sinful things, he called them to repentance because every sinner has a future. But he had special uh, venom, if you might use that term, for the false teachers, people who should know better and were leading the innocent astray. Polycarp in the per called people like that the firstborn of Satan. And that's what we should call this um, priest, Father uh, Casey Cole. He is the firstborn of Satan. If you watch his YouTube video on the issue of homosexuality, he is doing today what heretics like Marcion did yesterday. Namely, they lead the innocent into error and through error, ultimately, into damnation. In order to get to heaven, we have to know, love, and live the truth. And if we think and believe incorrectly, that molds our belief, and our belief molds our actions. His video uh, is on the issue of homosexuality, and you can, you can find it on YouTube. I don't even want to direct people to it. I don't want to promote uh, this uh, nefarious, noxious wind coming out of his mouth. But... If you do watch it, you'll know that he engages all kinds of um, uh, practices of the mind to obfuscate and to confuse. The point that he, he finally gets to is that um, there's really no positive portrayal of homosexuality in the Bible. Um, and we just don't really... Uh, know what to say about uh, homosexuality. That's his point. Um, his point is that uh, these monogamous homosexual relationships were a foreign concept in the Bible's time. And we live in a modern time in which uh, we're different. And the Bible can't speak to our current situation because we've evolved to a point where uh, people have these um, virtuous, monogamous homosexual relationships, and the ancient world didn't have that. So that's his point. First of all, that uh, you know the Bible really doesn't portray anything uh, about these relationships as such, um, and therefore there's just silence on it, he claims. And then he says, uh, regarding the actions, passive or active in the act of homosexuality, um, that there's, there's all kinds of, of biblical criticism and disagreement among scholars as to what that means. And therefore, we Christians are now in this kind of agnostic, foggy, middle haze where we can't really go left or right, up or down on the issue. We just don't know. It's absolute sheer nonsense that after uh, thousands of years of revelation, we've come to a point where as soon as the culture begins to embrace uh, homosexuality openly, this priest expects us to believe that after all of these thousands of years of revelation from the time of um, Abraham till now, there's just no clear position on homosexuality. Sheer nonsense. Uh, let's begin with what the secular world at the time uh, of the writers in the Old Testament uh, and leading up to Christ and a little after Christ, uh, what they had to say about it. So we're not even going to start with scripture. Let's start for the pagans, like Father Casey. Let's start for the pagans with the real pagans back in antiquity. We call lesbians lesbians because they're from this island just off uh, the western coast of modern-day Turkey called Lesbos. Uh, they led that lifestyle freely. Um, they chose it. This is uh, the, the, the claim of uh, people, heretics, firstborn of Satan like Father Casey, 
that well in the in the biblical time in antiquity uh, homosexuality was a relationship based on uh, power and uh, uh, that's simply not true I mean those things existed then as they exist now but uh, these were free associations uh, if memory serves me I think even Plato uh, speaks about uh, the, the, this problem in his time of men preferring the company of men and women preferring the intimate company of women. There was no question of power or coercion. People at the time of Plato freely chose these lifestyles. So, uh, and, and I think Juvenal also re writes about this. So th those are just three examples from uh, uh, the island of Lesbos, from Juvenal, from the writing of Plato. We see that uh, these were free associations. So any modern pagan or false teacher uh, heretics uh, like Father Casey who purport to have us believe that we're, we moderns are so different from uh, our forefathers in antiquity and in uh, the, and biblical times that uh, our situation is unique, that now we have this new reality of monogamous homosexual relationships that scripture doesn't speak to is sheer absurdity. The pagans refute the claims of the modern pagans. And just because he may have a collar or habit on, don't think the guy is not a pagan. This is pagan philosophy. It's philosophizing and it's using scripture and twisting it, distorting it, as Satan did to Jesus when he came out of the desert after 40 days to confuse people. Scripture is very clear that those who practice uh, homosexuality cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And, but the same is true for those who practice thievery, for those who practice uh, lying, those who practice uh, adultery. Uh, there's no special pass for anyone here. Uh, if you have practiced any of those things and you have been forgiven, then you know the joy that I speak about when we say that the saints are the, the, the masters of joy because they know how bad it was to be slaved, uh, in, enslaved to sin. And they know what it's like to be free. There is no way in the reading of scripture, in the reading of tradition, uh, from the beginning of uh, God's revelation to, uh, to Abraham, through uh, to the teaching of the church until like last Tuesday, that uh, this lifestyle is agnostic. There's no way it's agnostic. There's no way that in, in scripture and in tradition and in the writings of the saints, that uh, someone can possibly claim that we just um, uh, don't know what God's word has to say about uh, homosexuality. There are a plethora of, of scripture verses that uh, deal with this very clearly. And uh, what we have are people um, like Father Casey who come at these scripture passages, and there are many. First Romans, you can look at First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. You can look at Titus. Uh, I mean, the list is long, uh, to say nothing of the Old Testament passages. Uh, people look at these not with the mind of the church, but they come at these with the mind of a broken humanity and the pollution of the world, such that they seek to impose upon the word of God the understanding that the world would have us believe filtered through uh, the filthy lens of human passion so that they twist scripture to confuse us. But if we put all of that aside, uh, human passion, human sinfulness, and the distortion of the world's lies, and we simply imbue ourselves in the word of God and we understand it as the original authors and uh, the primary author, the Holy Spirit, and the original audience would have understood it, it's very clear that anyone who engages in homosexuality or adultery or thievery cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. But to all of us who repent and place our hope in Jesus Christ and leave our sins at the foot of the cross, to these we can hope for eternity. It's as simple as that. Love the sinner, hate the sin. And no fashionable sin, like homosexuality today, uh, no fashionable sin 
gets a pass on this. So whether you're guilty of, of thievery, of adultery, of blasphemy, of homosexuality, of uh, bearing false witness, whatever, is that all of you and me were all called to leave the sin and embrace the sinless one. No exceptions. He loves us and he desires that we live with him eternally.